Hey everyone, my name is Graham, and today I wanted to try something a little bit different. We've been playing games on this channel for quite a while, and if you've seen any of those videos, you've probably picked up on the fact that I watch a lot of movies. Like, a lot. <laughs> and uh, I've, I've done some write-ups in the past, just kind of on like Facebook for friends, uh, like movie reviews, what I thought of them, what I like, what I dislike. I like to do Oscar pools every year where I try to pick the winners and stuff. I really just love movies. And so I think kind of a natural next step for me is to do movie reviews. So for my first ever movie review, I'm going to be doing something which a million people before me have already reviewed, because I think that'll just kind of be a bit of a, a safety for me. It'll be a way for me to just test things out. Uh, <laughs> I kind of felt like I had a lot to say about the movie. Hopefully I have a few points that are unique and I can I can bring something new to what everyone else is saying. Uh, so today I'm going to be looking at Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. And full spoilers, it's the movie's been out what, like a, a month at this point? I assume everyone's seen it. But if you haven't, just understand that I'm just going to go through everything. I'm not leaving anything out. At this point everyone knows the plot. Uh, so I'm not going to spend any time doing a summary of that. I'm basically just going to be doing like a pros and a cons list, and then at the end I'll kind of say what did or didn't work, how I would have improved it, and then I'll try to give it a score at the end. Scoring things is hard. Uh, there's arguments that can be made that scoring is arbitrary and stupid, but I think it's it's important. It's part of like the review process. I'm going to start out by saying I am not a big fan of the movie shocking news I'm sure since most people loved it I think I think the most fair assessment is its IMDB score not necessarily that the score is accurate or representative but the fact that this uh, that the movie scored exactly the same as Man of Steel and yeah the movies are equally enjoyable equally flawed so I think that's like a good comparison However you felt about Man of Steel is probably going to translate quite exactly to this movie. But let's start with my pros list then. Number one, this is the best live action Batman yet. Just hands down. Uh, I didn't freak out as much about Ben Affleck as some people did. I th always thought he would make a good Bruce Wayne. I wasn't confident he could make a good Batman. I, I had reservations just like everyone else. But he killed it. He was awesome. He was fucking great. Just, uh, he was scary and he was intimidating and he was fucking huge. The dude was massive. <laughs> Can you imagine that Batman fighting uh, the, the Nolan vs. Bane? It was <laughs> Bane would be shitting his pants. Next, the movie had amazing action scenes. And that's something that Zack Snyder has always been good at. And that's something that I was really, really looking forward to this in this movie. Think of uh, the sweet kind of like slow-mo fighting scenes from 300 and The Watchmen and I wanted that but for Batman because the Nolan vs. Batman just threw haymakers. He was supposed to be like this trained ninja and he just punched people in the face a bunch. So I was really excited for this like acrobatic amazing display of fighting. Really when they make this new announced Ben Affleck written directed starring Batman movie Zack Snyder should come in there and show Ben how to make a sweet action scene. That's like the one thing that Zack Snyder should be left in charge of. The actual fight between Batman vs Superman was pretty sweet. I kind of loved how it was apparent that Batman had been planning this for like a long time and Superman just trounced everything right away. Or that, that awesome scene where Batman is punching him in the face as the kryptonite's wearing off and his punches are like doing less and less to the point that he doesn't even he like doesn't even move him or whatever shit like that was awesome <laughs> it, was, it was really cool and if that could have been the end like if it was Batman versus Superman nothing else beyond that if the movie actually delivered on what the title was fuck it would have been a way better movie Wonder Woman actually had a lot of potential I'm counting her as a pro definitely um, I'll get into this in the cons I'm not a fan of Gal Gadot in this role but the character has potential. 
she went one on one with Doomsday for like ten minutes while Batman and Superman dealt with their own shit, and like like they just kind of left her to it while Batman like Spider Man around this wreckage yard because he couldn't do anything because he's a human, and Superman was busy doing shit that like someone else probably should have been doing. So yeah, Wonder Woman as a character has been established as like powerful and awesome and like. Uh, when she finally showed up in costume, I was kind of nudged a little bit more onto the side of maybe I kind of maybe Gal Gadot can pull this off. And oddly enough, one of my favorite parts was actually the tease of the Flash. It kind of it, it's it's also a glimmer of hope because it's the only thing in the movie that really makes me feel like these guys have a plan the way that Marvel does. There's plenty more to like about the movie, but those are the, the main things, and the things that it did well, it did really well. Now I want to move on to cons, because there's a lot more cons than pros. Batman's origins have been told way too many fucking times. The, like, at least a dozen, like, on screen. I'm not just talking, like, different comics and video games and stuff. Not only have we seen it so many times, I feel like they fucked it up in this one. Someone might have to point me in the direction of like a comic or something where this is the case. Everything I've ever seen, Martha and Thomas Wayne, uh, they just, they get shot even while complying to like the gunman's demands. It's like this tragic accident that there was someone who was just so broken that he, he just fired this gun and it was just such a, just a neat, such a needless murder. And that's kind of important for the catalyst for Bruce becoming Batman is that this murder was so senseless. Um, in Zack Snyder's version, Thomas starts to throw a punch at the gunman, and so then the gunman all of a sudden panics and shoots. So it was like a defensive thing, rather than just him being a shitty lowlife. And I think that's really important. Someone's gonna, someone's gonna have to tell me, did the murder always happen with Thomas trying to intervene? I don't, I'm not positive on that. Someone help me out here. <laughs> The, the by far the worst part about this is just having shown it so many times that's the larger issue with it and they could have dedicated that to something way cooler the biggest point that Zack and Ben and everyone involved were trying to make here is that this is a very different Batman from what we've seen in like the Nolan verse they're dist distancing themselves from that as much as they can and a really the, the, the biggest gap there is that this Batman kills that takes a lot to go from this Batman who went to such great lengths to not kill people like the Joker to go to this Batman that will just kill any lowlife and so they could have dedicated the first five minutes where they showed the Martha Thomas murder and they could have shown the Joker killing Robin they didn't they don't even have to show that it could have been a tease it could have just shown Batman the opening shot could have been Batman holding Robin's dead, lifeless body, and then the following four and a half minutes could have been him escalating and just falling off the deep end. How he reached this tipping off point where he is willing to kill, that's very important, and they didn't establish that whatsoever. So the first time Batman just started popping off criminals, it was like, what the fuck, this Batman's just gonna kill people? That's very new to a lot of people. Like. You can't just dive into that and have people be like on Batman's side. I'm gonna I'm gonna rattle off a few quick ones now. Why is Alfred this like the same age as Batman? He's like five years older. That doesn't make sense. I don't know why the fuck they did that. It's cool that Alfred's like a mechanic or whatever, and he like helps. That's fine. But the the age thing is stupid. I already kind of mentioned this in the final battle. Batman was useless. He just kind of like grappling hooked around a bunch, and he like. You know, he used that kryptonite thing, like, at the end. Anyone could have done that, Batman. You didn't You didn't help a lot. We, we just saw him, like, take on Superman 1v1, and then he didn't even, like, attempt to do anything against Doomsday. He mostly just kind of ran. That was a little bit weird. It kind of, like, made the character a little bit less cool in my mind. I hated, I hated the way they teased the other villains. Some of my friends thought they were cool. Those fucking YouTube videos that Wonder Woman looks at, and then like, the the superheroes already have their own like logos and shit. And for some reason, it's all like these cryptic teases. Nothing is like, I I don't know. That that should have been like a viral marketing campaign. It like shouldn't have been in the movie. Uh, on to another big one. 
too many goddamn dream sequences. What the fuck? Zack, everyone knows that Batman's brooding and a little bit fucked up. You don't need to show 14 dream sequences. The fucking bats lifting. I laughed out loud in the theater when the bats lifted Bruce out of that well. It was the cheesiest shit I've ever seen. When when people have done it 14 times or whatever, you can't do it in a silly or goofier way. It's it, it already has so little emotional impact. You making this grand fucking visionary moment just made it stupid. I, I hated that. I hated it so much. The one time, the one time the dream sequences were effective is Bruce was having some nightmares. And in between the nightmare and him like fully waking up was the Flash's time travel sequence. And so that kind of muddied it a little bit. Bruce wakes up and he's like, did that happen? Did I dream it? He's like, not certain. And so the dreams were effective for that one part, but the other 15 minutes of dream sequences or whatever the fuck it was didn't work. Um, I don't know Superman that well. I haven't seen a lot of cartoons. I don't think I've read a single comic. I don't have a lot of exposure to Superman. And so I might be wrong here. But this Superman was just a mopey, sad man. <laughs> like, he just took no pride in his work. I don't know how they could have done the character differently, is what I'm saying. I lack that perspective of this character. I just don't like this mopey version of him. Speaking of lame characters, let's talk about Lex and Lois. A couple of LLLLLLL characters. <laughs> a lot of alliteration. Lex Luthor and Lois Lane. Do you think that's on purpose to have uh, to have his like girlfriend and his nemesis both be LL? Probably. He hit my teeth. Lex Luthor was a wiener. Oh man, I didn't like the character. I just didn't like the character. Jesse, I, I I'm. I'm fully certain Jesse Eisenberg did the best that he could, and based on how they wrote this character, I liked Jesse Eisenberg as a casting. You know, when they initially cast him, I was on board with everyone else with my pitchfork ready, and fuck that, that's a stupid casting. But, um, you know, when I saw him playing this role that was clearly written for basically him, he fit that role, I liked the little tiny cracks where he's like, kind of losing his sanity a little bit but that was too muddied by him trying to make every sentence that he said extra fucking dramatic and cool and a lot of what he said was stupid and a lot of his twitchiness and stuff was just annoying and he had zero intimidation factor while we're talking about this LL duo Lois Lane was useless garbage why why is she in the middle of all of this why is she not like in her home somewhere just like staying out of the way you you don't need her to show up and be like a powerful woman character in your movie you have wonder woman give her more screen time make her do more all lois lane ended up doing was needing rescuing several times including the time she tried to help she threw the kryptonite spear into the pond and then later was like oh they needed that i'll go get it and then she got fucking trapped and needed to get rescued and Superman like almost died because of it. Not only was she useless, she was like causing more problems. And that's why Superman wasn't helping Wonder Woman with Doomsday is because he was dealing with his drowning girlfriend who shouldn't have fucking been there. Leaving alone the fact that the whole Batman vs Superman confrontation ending over the name Martha, that was stupid. I'm not going to spend any time on it. Everyone knows that that was stupid. I just want to say why couldn't Superman save Martha? There was a time in the movie where Lois fell off of that building, speaking of Lois being useless. Superman came out of nowhere and saved her in a heartbeat. Superman's death was like such a huge waste. It's your second fucking movie and you you, you killed your main character? Like, you you spent this entire fucking movie building up the Justice League and even for people who aren't following that news and know that absolutely he's in the follow-up movie, you think for even one fucking second anyone thought that Superman was actually dead? 
after you spend 15 fucking minutes with like this funeral per- procession and everything then you just show a little dirt shake on the on the fucking coffin obviously he's coming back you, you didn't have anyone fooled it was fucking stupid to think that you did Marvel's made this mistake multiple times no one gives a shit about a death in a Marvel movie because they've only actually killed one character at this point and now I just kind of want to provide some final thoughts about the movie and uh, expand on a few of those points I feel like every character was useless or poorly written. I can basically go down the line of everyone. Batman was cool, but we never explained his motives, why he's willing to kill. Superman was fucking mopey, and he annoyed me. Lex annoyed me. <laughs> it's just, I just didn't like the character. That's kind of a personal preference. Lois was useless as shit. She just needed to be saved every goddamn five minutes. Wonder Woman was given like no screen time and so I don't know anything about that character and like she helped out a lot at the end but like she said like five words in the whole movie something else I've mentioned before I really think Zack should just be a visual guy it was a poor choice to hand him the keys to the kingdom as it were I mean Zack might like and respect comic books look how faithfully he recreated the Watchmen find your own Kevin Feige, someone who understands these characters, understands the entire catalog of your comics, and can just start piecing together this grand tapestry of what you want the universe to be. Marvel's been guilty of this before, making movies that seem to solely serve to set up future movies. That's a big negative. Your focus should really be on making sure this current movie is great. If you just focus on making sure you have strong characters and strong stories, People are going to follow your cinematic universe. Right now, DC doesn't have that credibility. People might skip Justice League because they didn't like this movie and because they don't know who these other characters are. This movie didn't get me excited for Justice League. It got me excited for more solo movies so I can find out who these characters are. It's also sad because you can see that a good movie, a stronger, a much stronger movie is like just out of reach. You know? chip away some of the excess, tighten up some of the sloppy bits, and it could have been so much more than it was. My own quick fixes. Rewrite Lois so she's not, so she's not there just being in the way in these really important times. This is personal, but rewrite Lex. Make him that like intimidating badass from like the Bruce Timm Superman cartoons. That's the Lex Luthor that I knew. Cut out all those dream sequences. They were stupid. Hey look, you just saved like 10 minutes of the movie. Use that to either spend more time on Wonder Woman or cut another 5 minutes from your movie. There was like more dream sequences in that movie than there was Wonder Woman screen time. She really just shouldn't have been in this movie and if you insist on putting her in there, make it worthwhile. I'd say the appropriate amount of time was dedicated to Batman. He was awesome, I'm thrilled about Batman. But don't spend any time on his origin. How did we get from that Batman who just started out trying to clean up his city to this guy who's just blowing away criminals? You know what, maybe they'll make the Batman standalone film a prequel. And if they do that, leaving it out of this movie is totally forgiven. But that means that movie has to come out before Justice League. (laughs) That's the only way that'll work. And the final conflict of this movie should have been the Batman vs Superman fight. There didn't need to be a big bad at the end for them to like join forces over. I realize that's like more grand and cinematic, but if you're gonna do it, don't do Doomsday. He's a pretty big villain. What was the first villain of fucking Iron Man or whatever? The I- Iron Monger or whatever? <laughs> it was a garbage villain. He was some throwaway like that. Who cares? Now, rating this movie is tough. I have my list of pros that I presented and then my like list of cons. So when you put those two side by side, it might look like I'm just going to destroy this movie. I think it deserves about a 6 out of 10. 5.5 maybe, but I don't really like the .5s, so I'll round up, I'll give it a 6. The movie is flawed in a lot of ways. But I still had some fun watching it. Batman alone is like three or four of that six. 
I took a long time thinking about that number, trying to reconcile the fact that I had so many complaints about this movie, but at the same time, I can appreciate what they're trying to do here. I'm just, I'm just sitting here trying to think of a way that I can properly explain how I can give this movie a 6 after I just shit on it for all that time. <laughs> I guess all I can say is after all those cons, the movie isn't wall-to-wall -wall garbage. It's got redeeming qualities. Um, humor wasn't one of them. There is like two jokes in that movie and they tank. I, I guess what it comes down to is if all you did was trim away the things that I felt were excessive and didn't change anything, there's still a strong movie there. If you trim away the excess and change those things, there's a great movie there. So I think based on the fact that the movie's just bloated, and just because it's bloated doesn't mean it's irredeemable garbage, it just means they tried to do too much. Too many cooks in the kitchen, maybe. I don't want the future of this franchise to suffer because of one bad box office performance. I'd rather they just take it as like a little nudge and a hint that maybe things aren't quite how they should be and that they'll take that as a lesson and they'll improve it in the future. I hope that maybe I had something unique to say. There's a lot of people with a lot of opinions and I would be shocked if I said anything that someone else hasn't already said, but I'd be pumped if that was the case. Like or dislike, let me know in the comments. I'd love to do more of these movie reviews because I just love movies, but I'd like to do my best to cater them to what you guys want to see. Like maybe you enjoy me rambling for 20 minutes, maybe you'd rather only see me talk for 2 minutes, maybe you just want to see a quick, uh, maybe, maybe, it, it, maybe it has no value to you for me to go in depth, maybe you just want the quick top points, spoiler free, and then a, a, a number at the end. And I'm willing to do that, and maybe I'll, I'll start like a blog or something if you want to follow that up with a more in-depth look at the movie. Please ask me anything, and I'll be sure to reply with like two paragraphs of a response, because <laughs> I'm going to defend, I'm going to defend myself to the grave on this fucking review. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care.